Did you know that loneliness is one of the most common struggles in today's fast-paced world? Yet it's something most of us try to hide, thinking we should handle it alone. If you want to find true peace, connection and fulfillment, you need to stop fighting your emotions and start embracing the power of community, perspective and impermanence. In this video, we're diving deep into the transformative practices that will help you combat loneliness, shift your mindset, and build a life that's rooted in inner strength. The best lesson I've ever learned in overcoming isolation is that your path isn't about doing everything on your own. It's about knowing when to ask for help, how to embrace change, and how to focus on what truly matters. Avoid this mistake thinking you're supposed to do it all by yourself. The truth is, when you open up to others and shift your perspective, you unlock an entirely new level of growth. So, if you're ready to find lasting peace, strengthen your community bonds and embrace life's fleeting moments. Keep watching. Number 1. The Power of Movement – How Physical Activity Fights Loneliness We've all been there. You've had those days when loneliness feels like an overwhelming fog. The weight of isolation pressing down on your chest, leaving you feeling drained, disconnected from the world around you. But what if I told you that one of the simplest solutions to combating this feeling doesn't require hours of therapy or deep self-reflection? Instead, it's something as basic as movement. Yes, physical activity. Imagine this you're feeling down, isolated in your thoughts. Maybe it's a cold, rainy day, or you've been stuck indoors for far too long. The loneliness creeps in silently at first, but soon it's inescapable. Now, what if you decide to go for a walk, jog, or maybe even take a quick bike ride? At first it feels like a chore, a half-hearted attempt to escape the confines of your mind. But just a few minutes in, something starts to shift. The fresh air fills your lungs. The rhythm of your footsteps or pedal strokes creates a sense of calm. Before long, the weight of isolation begins to lift. This is where the magic of movement kicks in. Science tells us that exercise stimulates the production of endorphins, those feel-good chemicals in the brain. It's like flipping a switch, a natural antidote to the clouds of loneliness that often hover over us. Exercise, whether it's a light stretch or an intense workout, can change the way we feel and think. You begin to realize that loneliness doesn't define you. It's just a feeling, one that can be disrupted by something as simple as getting up and moving. But the real power lies not just in the physical benefits, but in how movement breaks the cycle of overthinking that often accompanies loneliness. When you're moving, your mind shifts from ruminating on your isolation to focusing on the here and now. Your body's engaged, your breath is steady, and with every step or movement, you're giving your mind permission to quiet down. It's a reset button, one that can bring clarity and even joy, making it easier to see past the isolation and back into the rhythm of life. It's not just exercise, it's a tool that actively rewires your emotional state. Number 2. Treat yourself like a friend. Overcoming self-criticism. You've probably had those moments where your inner voice seems to be your worst enemy. It's sharp, harsh and relentless. It whispers or maybe even shouts that you're not good enough, that you're failing or that you'll never be able to overcome this loneliness. But what if, instead of that voice, you treated yourself like a friend? What if you turned the negative self-talk into encouragement, the way you would for someone you love and care about? We all have that voice inside our heads, the one that criticizes us at every turn, the one that tells us we're not enough. But have you ever paused to consider how you'd treat a friend who's going through the same thing? Would you tell them, Hey, you're a failure, no one likes you, or would you offer compassion, understanding, and a reminder of their strengths? The reality is, we often treat others with far more kindness than we treat ourselves. 
Imagine what would happen if you started to shift your perspective. What if, instead of condemning yourself for feeling lonely, you could look at yourself with the same compassion you'd show a loved one? It's okay, you'd say. I know this feeling will pass. You're doing the best you can. Self-compassion isn't just about feeling sorry for yourself, it's about acknowledging that you're human, that everyone struggles, and that you deserve kindness, even from yourself. There was a time in my life when I couldn't shake the feeling of loneliness, and worse, I was trapped in a cycle of self-criticism. I'd think about every mistake, every failed connection, and beat myself up over it. It wasn't just that I was alone, it was that I convinced myself I wasn't worthy of connection. But something clicked when I realized that the harshest voice I was hearing wasn't anyone else's, it was mine. The voice inside my head, the one I trusted to guide me, was the same one that was tearing me down. I remember a turning point. I was going through a rough patch, feeling disconnected from everything and everyone. I started writing to myself, but this time I did it as if I were writing to a dear friend. It's okay that you're feeling this way. You're not broken, you're doing your best, and that's enough. It wasn't an overnight change, but slowly I noticed a shift. The voice of self-criticism became quieter and the voice of self-compassion grew stronger. Now, I can't help but wonder how many of us are our own worst enemy without even realizing it? What if, instead of ruminating on our flaws, we started to practice treating ourselves like a friend? Could it be the key to breaking free from loneliness and self-doubt? Number 3. Finding Contentment The Stoic Approach to Satisfaction Have you ever noticed how our culture seems obsessed with more? More things, more success, more connections, more likes. It's easy to get caught up in the cycle of constantly striving for the next thing, thinking that once we get it, we'll feel truly happy. But what if contentment isn't about getting more? It's about learning to appreciate what you have right now, just as you are. This concept is at the heart of Stoic philosophy. The Stoics believed that true contentment comes not from external achievements or possessions, but from internal peace. They taught that we have the power to choose how we react to life's events, and in doing so, we can cultivate an unshakable sense of satisfaction, regardless of our circumstances. It's not about being complacent, but about understanding that we already have everything we need to be content. Think about it for a moment. How often do we chase after something we think will make us happy, whether it's a promotion at work, a new car, or a relationship, only to find that, once we get it, the happiness is short-lived? It's because contentment doesn't come from having more, it comes from within. The Stoics believed that by focusing on the present moment and being grateful for what we have, we could achieve a level of satisfaction that transcends external circumstances. There was a time when I thought happiness was just around the corner. I'd tell myself, once I get that new job, or once I make more money, or once I'm in a relationship, everything will fall into place. But after achieving those goals, I found myself right back where I started, feeling disconnected, lonely, and unfulfilled. It wasn't until I started practicing contentment in the present moment that I realized true satisfaction had been available all along. I didn't need to change my circumstances, I needed to change my mindset. Reflecting on this now, I can't help but think of all the things I took for granted. The simple joys of a quiet morning, the warmth of a cup of coffee, the support of friends and family, things I had once overlooked while chasing after the next big thing. It's funny how we often search for happiness in places far away, only to realize that it was right here, waiting for us to recognize it. But what about you? How often do you find yourself thinking that you'll only be happy once you achieve a specific goal or acquire a particular possession? What would happen if you paused, 
right here, right now, and chose contentment with what you already have? Could it change how you experience loneliness and satisfaction? It's a question worth exploring because for many, this shift in perspective can be life-changing. Number four, shifting perspective. Viewing life from a higher vantage point. We all have those days when we feel stuck in a rut, like we're walking through life with blinders on. The world around us is moving so fast, and yet we're caught in the weeds, overwhelmed by the details, by the things that feel out of our control. But what if we could take a step back and look at life from a higher vantage point? Imagine seeing your life not from the ground level, but from above, like a bird soaring across the sky, observing everything below. Suddenly, the noise, the stress, the constant chase for more doesn't seem so important anymore. This idea, though it may sound a bit abstract at first, is something that can change the way we approach challenges. Think about how often we get lost in the minutiae of our lives. We're consumed with deadlines, obligations, and endless to-do lists. It can be easy to forget that life is so much bigger than the stress of today. From a higher vantage point, you begin to see things in a new light. The problems that once seemed insurmountable are revealed for what they truly are, temporary obstacles in an ever-changing journey. I remember a time when I was so focused on my career that I could hardly see beyond the next big project. The pressure to succeed felt like it was weighing me down, and the fear of failure seemed constant. But one day I had a moment of clarity. I went on a hike in the mountains, and as I reached the summit, I looked out over the landscape. I could see miles of beautiful terrain, mountains, valleys, rivers, and in that moment I realized how small my worries were in the grand scheme of things. From up there, everything looked so much more peaceful, so much more manageable. The same principle applies to our everyday lives. By adopting the mindset of seeing things from a higher vantage point, we can distance ourselves from the overwhelm and gain clarity. Life, with all its challenges and uncertainties, becomes less about immediate reactions and more about long-term perspective. When we step back, we realize that most of the things that consume our thoughts today won't matter in the future. This shift in perspective can bring a sense of peace, one that is grounded in the understanding that everything is temporary and nothing is permanent. We're not defined by the struggles we face, but by how we rise above them. Reflecting on that experience, I can't help but think how many of us remain fixated on the small, immediate problems of our lives when we could be looking at them from a higher perspective? What would it feel like to pause and see our struggles as part of a much bigger picture? Could shifting our viewpoint bring us the clarity and peace we've been seeking? Number five, the strength of shared struggles, the power of community. We live in an age where independence is celebrated where the idea of going it alone is often romanticized. But here's the thing, no one is truly alone, and the strength we find in community is one of the most powerful forces in our lives. There's something deeply comforting about knowing that, no matter how isolated we might feel, there are others who understand our struggles. Shared experiences, shared pain, joy and triumph are what make us human. When we experience loneliness, it's easy to believe that no one else can possibly understand what we're going through. But the truth is, we're not the first to face these feelings, nor will we be the last. Human beings are inherently social creatures, and while solitude is necessary for self-reflection, connection with others is equally vital for our well-being. When we embrace the power of community, we find that we are never truly alone in our struggles. There was a time in my life when I felt as though I was carrying a weight that no one could see or understand. I isolated myself, convinced that my struggles were uniquely mine to bear. But then, something shifted. I began reaching out to others, 
First, just small conversations with friends. Then slowly, I started attending group gatherings and even online forums where people shared their own battles with loneliness and self-doubt. What I found was nothing short of transformative, hearing someone else voice the exact same fears and frustrations that I had carried in silence made me feel lighter, almost like a burden had been lifted from my shoulders. It wasn't just the advice or words of encouragement that helped, it was the realization that I wasn't alone. When we share our struggles, we gain not only empathy from others, but also strength. The collective energy of people coming together, offering support, and finding common ground in our human experience creates a bond that can't be replicated through solo efforts. It reminds us that our pain is not a solitary experience, it is something that connects us to others. In sharing our struggles, we also share our victories, celebrating together the triumphs that come from working through adversity, no matter how small they seem. I often wonder how many of us are missing out on the profound strength that comes from community, simply because we're too proud or too fearful to reach out. What if we stopped trying to do everything on our own and instead leaned into the power of shared experiences? Could embracing our shared humanity help us feel more connected, less lonely and stronger in the face of adversity? Number six, asking for help the courage to seek support. Asking for help isn't always easy. In fact, it can feel like one of the hardest things to do, especially when we've been conditioned to believe that strength lies in self-reliance. There's a vulnerability that comes with reaching out to others, admitting that we don't have all the answers or that we're struggling. It feels like surrendering control, a loss of the image we've worked so hard to maintain. But what if asking for help isn't a sign of weakness, but of incredible strength? We've all been there. The weight of our problems feels too much to carry alone, but the thought of reaching out to others feels even harder. We tell ourselves that we should be able to handle everything on our own, that needing help means we're failing in some way. But this mindset can keep us trapped in a cycle of isolation, stress and burnout. The truth is, asking for help is one of the most courageous things you can do. It takes strength to admit that you need others, and doing so opens the door to growth, healing, and connection. I remember a time when I was facing a difficult personal challenge. I was overwhelmed and didn't know where to turn. The idea of asking for help felt like an admission of defeat, and I resisted it for as long as I could. But eventually, the weight became too much to bear, and I reached out to a close friend. What happened next was unexpected. My friend not only listened, but offered a perspective I hadn't considered. They helped me brainstorm solutions and reminded me that it was okay to lean on others for support. That conversation changed everything. In that moment, I learned a crucial lesson. Asking for help isn't about weakness. It's about trust. It's about allowing others to be part of your journey and acknowledging that none of us have to walk this path alone. Whether it's friends, family, mentors, or even professionals, seeking support creates bonds that strengthen us. It gives us the courage to face challenges we might have otherwise avoided, knowing that we have a safety net to fall back on. But what about you? How often do you hold back from asking for help because of fear or pride? What could happen if you allowed yourself to be vulnerable and reached out to others when you need it? Could it make the difference between struggling in silence and finding the support that propels you forward? Number seven, focus on your path, resisting distractions and comparison. In a world that's constantly telling us what we should be doing, how we should look, and where we should be in life, it's easy to get distracted. We find ourselves scrolling through social media, comparing our journey to someone else's, and feeling like we're falling behind. The pressure to measure up can be overwhelming, and before we know it, we're no longer focused on our own path, 
we're distracted by everyone else's. But here's the truth, your path is yours, and no one else's journey will ever look the same as yours. The key to personal fulfillment lies in resisting the pull of comparison and focusing on what truly matters to you. When we stop looking at others, we free ourselves from the pressure to meet arbitrary standards and instead make progress on our own terms. I remember a time when I was caught in the comparison trap. I looked at people around me, friends, colleagues, even strangers on the internet, and felt like I was lagging behind. I questioned my choices, my progress, and my ability to succeed. But then I realized something that shifted my entire mindset. My journey is unique. Just because someone else has achieved certain things at a different pace doesn't mean I'm any less worthy or capable. It's easy to forget that social media often shows only the highlights, not the behind-the-scenes struggles. By focusing on others, we diminish the importance of our own progress. The moment I stopped comparing myself to others and refocused on my own path, I began to feel more empowered and content. I could see that my journey was not about how quickly I reached certain milestones. It was about enjoying the process and learning from every step, every setback and every success along the way. What about you? How often do you find yourself comparing your progress to others? What would happen if you stopped doing that and focused solely on your own growth and happiness? Could shifting your focus make you more confident and fulfilled in your journey? Number 8. Embracing Impermanence – Finding Peace in Life's Fleeting Nature Life is fleeting. We all know this, but it's easy to forget in the hustle and bustle of daily life. We get so caught up in our routines, our plans and our goals that we forget to appreciate the present moment. But the truth is, nothing lasts forever. Not the good times, nor the bad. And it's in this impermanence that we can find peace. When we understand that everything is temporary, we begin to approach life with a sense of gratitude. We realize that each moment, each experience, each interaction is precious because it won't last forever. Rather than clinging to the past or worrying about the future, we can find peace in the here and now. When we embrace impermanence, we free ourselves from the fear of loss and the anxiety of trying to hold on to things that are meant to change. I've had my share of experiences where I've tried to hold on to something, a relationship, a job, a particular phase of life, because I was afraid of change. But each time, life had its way of pushing me forward, and though it wasn't always easy, I eventually came to understand that change is part of the natural order of things. Every time something ended, something new began, and with that new beginning came fresh opportunities for growth. Now, when I think about impermanence, I'm filled with a sense of peace. I no longer fear change or loss, because I know that they are simply part of the ebb and flow of life. And in that knowledge, I find freedom. When we embrace impermanence, we stop fighting against the current of life and instead flow with it, accepting whatever comes our way with grace and gratitude. So, how do you view the impermanence of life? Do you fear it, or can you embrace it as a beautiful part of the human experience? What might happen if you chose to live fully in each moment, knowing that it won't last forever? If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments below. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who are truly committed to taking control of their life and embracing the changes that come with it. It's not always easy, but the journey to shifting your mindset and building a more connected, fulfilling life is worth every step. If you're serious about making lasting changes and unlocking your full potential, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. By joining us, you're not just watching, you're committing to a life of growth, connection and transformation. Let's make this journey together.